Please join me and welcome Mr. Robert Gooden from Canada. I'm not a rock star. <laughs> I'm a guitar maker. Then I would like to you tonight to have a great night and learn something about guitar, how to vision a guitar. Today it's very difficult because you walk in the store, the wall is full of guitars, and today it's more and more difficult to choose a guitar because a low price guitar is as beautiful and the most expensive. When I was young, I don't want to tell you story of grandfather, but you know, a cheap guitar was ugly. An expensive one was nice, but today they're all nice. <laughs> then you're there. You know, it's more difficult for you to choose. And also, the guitar playing changed a lot. And this is my mission to touch you exactly with the instrument you need. I'm going to start by acoustic, tell you things that you probably never heard. For the last 15 years, I teach also. I give my company to my two sons. Salmon and Patrick, and uh, which is a brand of guitar of us. Then I teach at Berkeley Music School, Berkeley in Boston. Yeah, I think it's the biggest school of music in the world. Also classical and modern music and recording and on and on. And I do also in Spain. In Valencia. I do that just because I conduct the research department. Then I can see the new generation of guitar players. There is a new generation. They have different needs and it helped me to, we have a, a good team of research to bring the guitar. Simple, very effective and this is my goal. And I do guitar clinic like tonight. I do almost every day. Tomorrow I'm in Vienna and I'm going to meet other guitar players and uh, it's a lot of fun. Then I'm going to start with that. Let me get an acoustic guitar. Then for everyone, an acoustic guitar. Hmm, how it works. Really, I will explain you the basic idea of how it functions. You understand my English? Okay, because I'm French. <laughs> then it's good that you understand. I will speak very slow. Try that. We get there. Okay. My objective of tonight is that you leave this night and say, wow, I learned something. And it's going to help you to choose instrument, ask the right question. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You have to watch me because I speak a lot, <laughs> too much sometimes. Then here, the most part, the most important part of your guitar it's the table, the top here. And, and the top, the example I give, it's like a speaker, a real speaker. When I hit the string, the top move like a speaker. Then I need a very specific wood here to be sensitive. What I want, I want the top to be like a studio monitor. A studio monitor means with a very low volume, you will hear the full sound. A cheap speaker, you will have to crank the volume to get a sound. 
then what I want is when I touch very gently, I hear the bass, the mid, the high. Then means I need a very sensitive piece of wood here. And the wood has to be very light, but very strong. Contraire, you know, it's if I put a hard piece of wood here, I will have no base. The sound will be thin, just high. But I need the tree voice, very distinctive at any level of playing. The wood we use for the table, the only wood, there's a couple of times, but it's spruce. What is spruce? Uh, smelk? Okay. <laughs> okay. And for everyone, smelk? Smelk is cheap. You know, when you say, this is massive smelk, you know what I'm so what? You know? But the guy in the store who work on the store, him, he knows that it's the good wood. But you you're a player. You don't know those things. You don't have to. Then, but smirk, it's not the regular one. We need a tree like one minimum one point two diameter. This is huge. The majority, this is to make a perfect top. The majority of this wood grow in Canada. I live in the right country for that. <laughs> yeah, there's giant spruce. And the other wood, which is known, cedar. Cedar, it's, I like both. They're different sounding, but they're both good. Then this, this is the right thing. But if I say just smirk, you're going to say, whew, construction wood. You know, <laughs> you think that. But when I say it's a tree of 1.2 meter minimum, you're going to say, whoa, just a minute. You know, it, and it's serious. I cut a tree many years ago, two meter diameter. We count the line, it was over 2,000 years old. Then, are you interested a little bit on that? Because I'm going to draw you uh, exactly what it is. Then if I make a big tree, ooh, it looks special. <laughs> then here, the line, the line of the tree, on the tree, each line is one year. Then because I'm a little bit in a hurry, I'm not going to do 500 lines. <laughs> Just a few. But this is the way you count the age of a tree. Why I want a big tree versus a smaller tree. It's for the grain. The grain, it's the line. Now I'm going to draw a guitar top. This one looks better. <laughs> then the grain, I want my grain to be straight. Means all the lines straight like that. And to have all the lines straight, I need a big tree. Because if the tree is smaller, it's going to start straight. It's going to go like this and almost flat. Then look, the example is if I take a, a credit card maybe. No, oh, my room key. <laughs> then this way, this is the grain, okay? Now it's straight. It's like this, perfectly straight. Then it's, if I do a lot of, it's very stiff. Flat grain, it's soft. Straight, very stiff. If it's crooked a little bit, 
then it's going to torque. It's not as good. Then we need perfectly straight all true. Okay? And um, we see in the guitar here, you see, there are all these lines. And the grain is placed like that. All like this. And the top of the guitar is always two piece. Two piece mean we take a piece of wood, we open like a book. The term in English is called book match. Book match. Then I have the same amount of line on this side than this side. The guitar is divided into the bass side, the treble side. Then that's why there's no one piece top. The line is straight in the middle. Hey, every string instrument, the top is two piece. Even a violin, a cello is two piece. Okay? Then, inside of the top, we're going to put some bracing, some bar of wood to reinforce the structure because a set of string pull 80 kilo, an example, 80 kilo like this, then for a 10 piece, you need structure to help. But the structure has to be very light. Then it's murk, smirk. Okay. Then we use smirk wood for the bars. And the bar are for the structure, but also it's like a graphic equalizer to control my eye. You see, if the top do big movement, Big movement, eagle, bass. Fast and short movement, high notes. Then I want some good bass here, some good ring in my high notes. Then it's an equalizer inside. It's quite something. Could take, it's a lot of research to equalize a top good, but also it has to resist. You know, there is a legion that the most incredible guitar was last four hours. It was not braced properly. Then you follow all these things. Then you must heard too that more you play a guitar with massive smirk, better it will sound. You heard that? It's not the time. A lot of people say, oh, I'm looking for an old guitar, you know, because it's going to sound better. It's not true. If the guitar is not played, no improvement. It's only playing who bring a better sound. I will explain you why. I don't want to tell you something without telling you. And I never met someone who knows. You know, it's it's really something. Then let's. It's all about the grain again. Then if I remember the top move like a speaker, then here, if we look at the smirk inside, you see you have the grain, the line. And between each line, you have little bubble. It's little bubble, like styrofoam, foam. Yeah, a coffee cup, you know? And it's very light. That's why the wood doesn't weight anything. You have a grain bubble, a grain bubble. Then more you play, more the bubble here loose. Then, after a certain time, your guitar do two movement. It's going to move like the speaker, but it's going to start to 
move the other direction because the bubble will lose. But the guitar will improve with your playing means if you play more in G pattern because you sing in G or your band play more. We always play more in certain pattern than the other. Then if you play G a lot, your guitar will improve in G. In F, zero. You see, it's quite something. Because F, the guitar doesn't hear it. Then no improvement. The improvement is with your playing. Then that's why it's good to have a guitar for a, to have a good guitar that you're going to keep for a certain time because the guitar the acoustic guitar will go with your playing. Then it's quite interesting. You know, it's all physics an acoustic guitar. Then now it's good too if you don't play your acoustic to take a guitar stand and put it in the front of the speaker when you don't play, then the guitar is going to hear other vibration than yours. Then could improve in F and B and C. It's just let the guitar have other music than yours. <laughs> this is a trick. Now, very nice guitar. We built a room that we break the guitar with tone generator. Like the guitar is, it's very loud and the string vibrate by himself. It aged the guitar. We do that. Not in all the guitar, but on the more expensive to get the guitar better. So far, so good? Okay. Now you're going to say, yeah, but every guitar does that. Today we see very cheap guitar with massive top means nothing because it's the finish how we gonna cover the wood this is the difference today we see a cheap guitar covered with plastic polyester very thick then to get a sound they reduce the thickness of the top and put the polyester in two hours, the top is finished. It's dry, it's over. Hours to build a, a seagull or salmon and padre, it takes six weeks. We don't work six weeks on it, but we glue apart, we wait 24 hours. Just to do the finish, it's almost one week. Then you spray a very thin line. You wait 24 hours, you sand. Spray another one, you do four times. Then, but it's to have less finish as I can, but you need finish. No finish, the guitar will destroy. It will crack and everything. You need finish, but a very thin finish. Then you're gonna say, hey, I'm not a scientist. I don't know finish. Then I have a trick for you. If you want to test. Like this one. This is the finish. is a nitrocelluloid. Okay. Who knows that? It's a very thin finish. Then what it does. You can find if it's really thin lacquer with your finger. Pushing like this. Not like this, pushing. And when you push, you're going to feel each line. And then it's, oh, okay, it's nitro. A polyester one is like a glass. You won't feel. Just push with your finger. The tip, like this. No, not like this. Okay. Don't do that with your dog. <laughs> but you go and you feel each little line. Then this is the trick. Then the finish will let the guitar vibrate. 
and it will separate. If you have a massive top covered with polyester, it will never age. The separation won't happen. Then the sun will stay the same. You know, like this one is so sensitive. Still sound. You know, if I do here, do you hear in the back? Yeah, okay. You see? Then now, to make a good guitar is you have to be extremely precise. We don't make handmade guitar. It's all we have the most sophisticated equipment. To make a good guitar, you have to be so precise that everything is cut with numeric machine, uh, you know, to be extremely precise about the thickness and everything. Then the other part of your, your guitar, which is very important, when I said, here my top vibrate very well, the neck. The neck, him, he vibrate this way. Same way as the, the top here. Then, to make the ultimate sound of the guitar, is we have to synchronize the neck with the table, with the body. We have to organize that they move together. If they move not together, it will sound mediocre. You see, I was very embarrassed 45 years ago making 100 guitars and 20 were good. Oh, 30 were very medium. Some were terrible. And I say it's the same wood, same thing. Is there's a very big important factor is the neck here, there's an angle like this to match. For a metal string, the angle has to be just in the back, a air, one degree back. This will control the pressure here. The saddle, the white piece here, is the microphone of the string. Then the pressure here on the saddle, transmit to the table the vibration. Then if I go back, I'm pressing more. If I'm going to here, I'm losing here. Then I'm losing volume. But a steel string guitar, the angle, it's an airbag. A classical guitar, contraire. Very different animal. A classical guitar, I should say now in string, you have to a front angle because the string are not as stiff. The top doesn't want to move because instead of 80 kilo, it could be 60 kilo, 55 kilo tension. Then we have to play together with this. For this, each guitar has to be measured, the top with the neck. Give you the example is each top has got a curve like this, natural. I'm talking air. This one is going to have two air hop. Then, if, then we have a machine, the guitar is like this, the sensors here analyze the curve of that guitar and say, oh, two, to, two more. But I want one back. Then I'm going to say two. To get to zero, I'm going to say minus two. And if I want my degree back, it's going to be minus three. Then what I'm going to do, set the machine minus three, 
and it will fix here the angle of the neck. And this will maximize the vibration. I don't know if you follow me. Like when we tune like this, now we hear equal. If I go, see? I'm very close. Then when I'm tuning the neck here, it's going to do boom, I'm right on. Then it's a way to explain. You follow? Are you interested? Because I can switch <laughs> subject, you know. But now you know there's angle. The classical guitar, the nylon string, is we pull this, the neck. The neck, I mean, the string pull the top. Then a very expensive nylon string guitar, like for Segovia, an example, lasts not more than five years. After five years, it's still going to play, but you're going to lose your attack in the B string and the G. That's the hardest to get the sound. For him, he wants this attack. But because we pull the top, after four or five years, it's going to start to lift. You pass through. It's good for a beginner. That's why the big concert is they have always a nice guitar in construction. Still string guitar, because of the back angle, you're okay. It could last 50 years if you maintain right. Okay? I have a question. Yes. If you were talking about the saddle. Saddle? Yeah. What, uh, what is your opinion in contrary, you know, the... Uh, Synthetic materials, contrary okay. the bone, yeah. as well as the saddle and the nut. Okay. Is there a big difference in your opinion? Yes. I, me, personally, we use, I mean, me, the company use synthetic bone called Graftec Tusk, the real name, because I'm sure of the density. Bone before was the ultimate, but they use all kind of bone. The density change, it's not precise. This one I can buy, oh, it's like steel. I can say, I want this rigidity to give me perfect. And those are made in Canada, the company called Graftec. It's Tusk, T-U-S-C, Tusk. And I use the same here. Is that okay? <coughs> okay. Before, guarantee it was the bone. The plastic was not strong enough. And, uh, that. and it says on the saddle, I write it, on, it says tusk here and here too. Okay? Then this will give you the ring. If you have a bad material, when I do, let's say, here, see here, we hear everything, and it lasts. If I have a softer material, it will do boom and die. You want the ring and sustain, if you want. Good enough? Yes, sir. I have another question. Mm -hmm. I have a, a very old uh, German uh, jazz guitar. Okay. And they have a zero fret, fret from the metal. Yeah, yeah, a Hoyer. No, after long. Ah, uh, okay. Then this, it's good. I have nothing against, except at that time the fret quality was not as good. And with time, it go through. The string will cut a little thing, and it makes a buzz. You know, that's why today we don't see as much. But it was a good way. The hardest, when you cut the nut here, is to have it perfect. 
then when you bar for your F chord, this is so hard. When you cut a nut with a file, you can do many. You get tired. It's, if you just do a little shot too much, it's going to hit the first fret. Then we design a, a machine who cut very precisely the height that I play here. It's like playing here. Then it's very important. But the zero fret, we see sometimes. Good. Uh, now, you're going to say, hey, Mr. Godin, why you made this funny headstock? <laughs> Pointy. You know, normally, the guitar is rectangular here. Do that for tuning. And today, we use a lot of alternative tuning. Before, we were playing acoustic three first fret, sometimes six, seven, but it was there. Today, we play the guitar everywhere on the neck, and we tune differently. And this is a very sensitive part. If I lose my big string to D, the headstock will twist a little bit. For this, you take a, a rule in metal, you put it here, and you do that. Ooh, you're going to say, hey, it twists. You can't see that. But here, I implement a narrow headstock. Like the G and the D usually are here. Larger you are here, more you twist. It's physics. Closer you hear. I didn't invent that. The cello, they're straight pull. Violin are straight pull. But the guitar, one guy decided to make this big headstock. <laughs> but we have to understand they were playing acoustic differently. Today, the seagull, what is very nice, it's so stable. You see, like. If I do now a D tune, it's perfect. A regular guitar, you're going to touch the B a little bit. Maybe the G, but not here. I'm going back. It's right on. Then, it's stability. Another thing I did is we cut the piece of wood and turn it, reverse the grain to help. Like a cello, like a double bass. Then you put that here, the neck is much stiffer. You see, a guitar looked like a guitar, but that's why the seagull is a very high-tech acoustic. Four little things. Tuning is so important. Then also here, a big problem where the guitar moves, it's here. Then when you tune your guitar, the neck moves. You don't see with your eyes, but it's a big thing. Then to help this, uh, I put two pencil here in the heel up to the fingerboard. They're like this in maple. What is maple in? Yabon? Yavor. Okay. We have a lot of maple in Canada. <laughs> Yavor. Okay. Then we had that with a special glue. Then it reinforced this here. Then your neck is stable. It's stability, balance. It's all these detail. And to help, we did something else. We never stop. <laughs> we have a good team of research. The gear, the mechanic, 
the ratio, okay, the little gear inside are different. Well, on the big string here, the tree, it's quite standard. The ratio is 1 to 18. 1 to 18. But for the I note, it's 1 to 26. This is new. I dreamed that for years, but now, you see, a lot of time when you tune, oh, you pass through. It's hard. The B, the G, they drive you crazy. You turn, turn too much. Oh, not enough. Too much. With 126, you can turn, and it's going to come just the way you want. Then you tune twice faster. It's all the plus. It doesn't cost more. You know, making a good guitar, this is a medium price guitar. It's, and I'm not here to show you a $5,000 guitar. The hardest guitar to make is those. Because you have less money, but you have to be very precise. It's all precision. Then the guy, you know, I want to say, oh, I have a handmade guitar. I'm afraid of that. Because they're not the guy doing with his knife and his sand. Oh, you know, there's no two necks the same. Then this is all the important, the thickness and this and to make. Then I'm very proud of this guitar. It's like those machine ed. We work a lot, but they're distinctive, it says on it. And we make the shape like a scooter, Italian, Vespa. <laughs> you know, we then I have, a, two, I have two Italian designers with me. They had to put their Vespa somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and they're very happy. Then, you see, now you understand the mechanic, the neck move. The table move, then you have to synchronize them. That's why that one, it vibrates. I'm just going to do a little test with you. I'm going to go and see you. Don't be afraid. I'm afraid to go down. Okay. <laughs> then here... Touch the table here. Now touch the neck. You see how it vibrates? Then they have to be synchronized. It's still vibrating, but let's be fair. You see, you should sit in the front. Don't sit in the back. <laughs> I'm going to do everyone. It's going to be a very long clinic tonight because <laughs> everyone wants to test. And touch the neck. Touch the body. You see, even my voice, because the finish is very... My voice, put like that. One, two, three, you feel my voice. And the neck vibrate too when I speak. Wow. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's say in French, maybe. Un, deux, trois. Un, deux, trois. In Montreal, it's really French. Okay. Sorry for you. You're too far. <laughs> then, another thing too. Because now we play all over the neck and everywhere, and we play alternative tuning, the guitar are more difficult. Then I, I work on the scale. I mean, on the position. A little air there, there. Took me a couple of years, but hear that. If I do... See, it works everywhere with close and open string. 
And this is fun. When you have that, then you can do all kind of crazy tuning, and it works. So far, so good. The next one is don't tune an acoustic, a good acoustic guitar like this. You see, I'm not correct. It's going to play the scale, but you're going to play a chord, it doesn't work. The best way for an acoustic, you tune two strings at the time. You see, if I... Now I'm off. We hear. It's going to be the same, but I guarantee you, you tune like this after, and you're going to play a chord, it's going to be good. Why? It's because when you do this, you hear one note. When I play the string open, I hear the fundamental, E. I hear G sharp, the fifth, you know? And yeah, I hear two notes. And if you have a very good guitar, you're going to hear the B also. And you have to harmonize. Then when I do this, I hear all the harmonics. Then I harmonize. Maybe I'm going too deep. But look, a piano. A cheap piano with a tuner, electronic, you can tune it. But if you have a, a Steinway or a Fazioli or, a, you know, Bosendorfer piano, whew, it is a job to tune. Because if you tune with the machine, it won't play chords. <coughs> then you're going to say, wow, you're going to play CD, it's going to work. But the minute you're going to play a chord, and the higher, ooh, higher you go, you have to be sharper. And it's an art to tune a very good piano because the very good piano has got a lot of harmonics. That's why the blind can concentrate and hear all the harmonic. And it's taken about two hours to tune a piano <coughs> because it's an art. Then if you buy one day a very good guitar, more expensive, it's going to be harder to tune a little bit. It's normal. Because now your guitar gives you more notes. Okay? A lot of blah, blah. Huh? <laughs> I'm dangerous for that. <laughs> but it's all physics, all understanding. You know. Now we're going to talk electric, too. And electric... It's the same idea. For everybody, an electric guitar, oh, you take a body, you put a neck, to Seymour Duncan, and we're in business. You know? It's not at all. An electric guitar, it is a sophisticated acoustic guitar. It is really acoustic. And what I said, the angle of the neck and all, it's going to apply. We're going to do the test right away. Then now you're going to say, okay, the next big thing is the last big shot. I'm going to drop this guitar. You, I know you want to see other guitars. Then it's the scale of the guitar. What scale is this guitar? What's that mean? The scale is the distance from the nut here to the bridge. There's two very known scale. I'm going to help you, okay? Short scale, Gibson. Everybody knows Gibson guitar. The Gibson, the majority of their guitar are short scale. 62 centimeter from there to there. I like that. Long scale, Fender. I'm easy for you. Then long scale, it's just a few centimeters more, 
65 centimeters from there to there. It makes a huge difference in sound and playability. Then the short scale to tune E, it's looser. The long scale for my E, wow, I have it's harder. But the sound, you see, in the short scale, we're going to hear more, less harmonics, less ring. We're going to hear more the fundamental. Like we're going to hear more one note. Then a lot of guys use a, then the sound is more bass mid. And a lot of guys use the Les Paul because it's easy to bend. And also in distortion mode, they're going to have this fat sound, you know, because of the mid bottom of the short scale. The Strat player use single coil. Wow, that's another game. Single coils got a lot more sound. Let's say if the range, I'm taught, just to change the matter, you see like, a Les Paul, the range is there to there. Bass high. The Strat is going to be from there, but up here, and more mid. But, wow, it's like tuning a very expensive piano. Then Strat player, wow, it takes them three, minimum three to four years to get used to their problem. There's a lot of problem with the single coil. But man, I love the sound. You know, there's a price for everything. But the Strat player, Never look for new guitar. He's got so much problem to control his guitar. <laughs> that, no, 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 I'm not looking for anything. A humbucker player, he looks for everything. Because he's got less problem. He's got different sound. Then, scale. Like, a tuning a short scale is much easier than tuning a long scale. Like for our lower price guitar, we have a short scale. From this model up, it's long scale. You won't see with your eyes. It's just this different, but it makes day and night. This got more harmonics, more ring. But when you begin, when you start to play, you love bass. That's... A, a beginner player, his preferred sound is bass. It takes with the year, then you look for the ring, you look for the harmony. Before that, you don't hear it. Then it's all these things, you know, <coughs> that are important. Now, I'm going to show you then. It's okay for the acoustic? No question? Yeah, I have a question. <coughs> Sorry? Question. Yeah? Uh, do you make your company, do you make some guitars for someone, uh, like for one person, if someone wants some special guitar to order and they have some needs? Do you do this? Do you make some guitars like? Custom guitars. Oh, no. no. I'll tell you why. We have a big range of guitar, many models. If you explain your need, I'm quite sure we have the guitar for you. But to go and say someone, I want more this, more that, sometimes just to test the model, it takes years. I can make anything. I can get you this guitar double bass. But maybe in six months, in one year, it's going to start to make a bump here. Because I lose the structure. See, then we do structure test. It has to last. It's an illusion. We can, if you come here to the store with your guitar, they can check your guitar, they can improve your guitar by adjusting perfectly. 
just this, it's a big thing. But to make a guitar just for you, for a specific sound, do you play for a long time? I, I didn't ask for me, I just ah. curious for some, I don't know, for some guitar player. Okay. Okay. Because, I don't know, famous and want something special, you know? Yeah, well, it's dangerous, yeah. <laughs> I have to say. It's quite dangerous. Okay, can I have one more seagull question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm curious about the shape. The most uh, shapes I see, something like narrow shoulder dreadnoughts. Or yeah, it's okay. That's exactly. Okay. Uh, then seagull doesn't have a traditional shape. Uh, let me see. You see, this is, a, this is a heart and lutri. This is a traditional, we call dreadnought shape. Here on the top is flat, on the bottom is flat. The seagull, what I did is, if we take it here, I made it round here and round in the bottom. And the shoulder a little bit, oh, very little narrower to balance the sound. It's just a little touch, but you have good eye because you saw it. You see, if I put side by side, see, it's a they're both good. This is tradition. This is the new way. <laughs> no, but the problem is, and I didn't succeed to fix it, is I'm not in the back of each guitar. I wish to be in the back of the guitar, and you come and say, explain you. <laughs> I'm not there. And uh, this is hard, you know. I put, you saw I spoke for a few minutes just about different things in my guitar. I wrote it down. There's a, 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 there's a paper in the box who explain everything that I said. I never met somebody who read it. You know, people, we sell in 65 countries. Then people say, oh, please, Mr. Godin, make a, uh, a pamphlet, something we explain. I say, it's on every guitar. I've never seen that. <laughs> Check. No, it's understandable. It's hard to read. <laughs> no, no, it's not because you don't know how to read. It's the language. It's very, to read it, you're going to say, I didn't catch it, really. You know, I made drawing, I explained the grain, those things. But the best is like that. That's why I'm everywhere, nonstop, to talk about guitar. It's complex. But now, did you learn something? You know what is a massive top? The advantage? The neck movement, the pointy head stock, special mechanics, you know. And I forgot one thing, the truss rod. What this man said, the truss rod, and it's so important. All my guitar, whatever brand, Siegel, Simon & Patrick, Art & Lutri, Norman, I have double function Trust rod. Was is das? <laughs> <laughs> then, today, a lot of people tune, not standard. The new generation tune E flat. And they use light gauge string. My granddaughter plays guitar. She's 14, and wow, she tuned in E flat now. Then, if you tune in E flat, it's a lot less tension. Then the neck will go over like this. Then your guitar's gonna buzz. Three first frets gonna be terrible. 
and the sun is going to be thin because your neck, the head stops going down. It's like changing the angle. Then the double function truss rod works both ways. Let's say the conventional, conventional way to adjust a truss rod is when your neck do like a banana, an example, uh, with time, then you type clockwise with the key and it'll bring the neck straight. <coughs> That's a conventional. Our truss rod, if you have the overneck, then you go contour clockwise and the truss rod will, the neck who was over will bring it down. Then now I can use on an acoustic 0 10 gauge, it's light. Tune an E flat and make it perfect. This is a big deal. Then it's so important. All my guitar, acoustic and electric. Because an electric, a lot of guys tune an E flat. But they have problem of buzzing. They lift the action. It's not a great solution. Then it's good. Don't play with that too much. Come to your good shop. Say, tell me about your great service. <laughs> check my guitar. You know, once a year, just check. If you check, change, sorry, gauge of string, your neck could do something. It's a little thing. But for you to start to play with keys and sound, mm, you know, you don't fix your car like that. You go to the garage and say, my car doesn't run well, then it's the same for the guitar. Then here they have good technician. They're going to look, they're going to say, oh, it's good. Oh, he's going to say, look, it's, it's over, it's under. But it's easy to repair. Okay? Then double function truss rod. <coughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> now, over the years, I change a lot. I did a lot of mistake. You know, a lot of mistake of judgment. Thinking that all the guitar players will understand. Our clientele, it's more professional guitar player for the last 45 years. Now, the young wants to play Godin. But the young, they know a lot less than you. Then they're afraid. They walk to a music store. They look. If they don't recognize the shape of a guitar, they're going to say, very nice, but they don't buy it. And this was my problem. Then today, we made shape common. Like this, I don't have to tell you. You know the brand. But we changed the shape we did here. Uh, this cut here, we call the beer belly cut, you know, because it's your beer belly. Then we made it deeper, thinner, little detail, the weight of the guitar. The biggest problem is weight. And we work a lot on that. And we correct without compromising the shape and the look. We fix all the problem of the single coil guitar. I'm just looking. This is the guitar from the wall. Then check acoustically. You see, unplug. We hear a sound. If the guitar is not correct, you hear nothing. It's tin tin. The best place to check a guitar without an amplifier is ear. Then you just put your ear. If you hear the deep, mid, high, plug it. But if you don't hear it acoustically, don't plug it. <coughs> microphone pickups are microphone. Then the pickup take what the guitar offer. Then a lot of guys say, I'm going to buy a cheap guitar, I'm going to put three Seymour, it's going to sound incredible. No. 
you know, it's me. I don't have a nice voice. If you give me a $2,000 microphone, it's going to be awful <laughs> because my voice is mid, oh, mid, mid, and it, it's going to be worse because you're going to amplify something terrible. <laughs> if the voice is nice and you put a great mic, wow, now we're going to have something. Then here, the body vibrates here and the neck the same way. The neck goes like this, the body. Remember my acoustic, the angle? It's the same here. Look, again, lucky you. <laughs> Touch the body. Touch the neck. You. See? And the neck. Here it is. Next time, sit in the front. <laughs> <laughs> then, we take... This is all done with numeric machine, working this angle perfect, but acoustically, this guitar sounds. And it's sustained forever. Because everything is at the maximum. Tremolo. Where's your trem? Oh, maybe it's in my case, I never use it. Because it doesn't stay tuned. You know, it's normal, then you don't use it. This tram here stayed perfectly in tune. Took us years of fixing. But it's not me who fix it, it's the engineer, mechanical engineer. It's the material. But look, let's see. Okay, now I'm going to do... Let's see. See? I'm going to go. And this is not a guitar I brought. This is the guitar of the store. From the, you see? No locking tuner. No locking nut. It worked. I can go bo backward. perfect. This I'm very proud. <laughs> because it's the nightmare. This one is so smooth. I can do like a Floyd Rose almost, just doing... You know, it works. Unplug. Then plug, it works more. Okay? Then, just this. The, another big problem is with the single coil, the magnet, magnet in uh, Czech, how you say? Magnet. Same thing, okay. Then, on the single coil, the magnet is right on the top here. Then the magnet pull. A humbucker, the magnet is under the pickup doesn't have the same thing. Here, especially the neck pickup here, when I hit the string, the string turn, every time the string pass in the front of the magnet, oh, it pull. Then you play on a big string, let's say from the seventh fret, you can tune it, you hear woo, 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 woo. Then they say, put your pickup down on the bass side. But it's not the solution. It helped, but we really did crazy thing. We move the magnet out of the field. This one. And now it's perfect. And you can put your pickup even each side. We did for each string. It's just time. Another thing on that one, this is the entry level one. We put a humbucker, a very good humbucker, but also with a push pull here to split 
the humbucker, which is two coil, to one coil, double coil. This is not really an expensive guitar. This one is uh, 15,000. Then there's a lot of things. We have the same mechanic, 1 to 26 on the high notes, 1 to 18 on the bass side. Is there any question on uh, this time? Yes? I have a question. You spoke about the importance, uh, about the importance of uh, precision while marrying the neck and the body together. Yeah. And how do you feel about neck through design? For instance? Okay, a neck through design for a guitar we don't see anymore. Because this was popular about 25 years ago when uh, sc psychedelic music, you know, it was very high distortion, then it was a mid-sound guitar. A bass guitar, wow, this is okay, neck true. The same wood for the neck and the body. On the bass, then your string tension is big. Everything moves. But when you put 0, 9, 0, 10 gauge on an electric guitar and you put neck through, same, it doesn't move. Short movement, mid eye, no bottom. That's why it disappeared. There is a neck glue on the body. That's a different. Is it the neck through, you ask me? Uh, I'm I'm talking specifically about the neck through, for instance, the middle is half. You see, uh, it popped up like, I don't know, half a year ago. I, I won't name the brand, but uh, all of their top range guitars now are neck through. That's <laughs> holding one. Yeah. So, but those are a bit metal for a heavy gauge string. So, there's the. I think. No problem to the bass. No, the bass is not the same. The bass, you have triple tension then it's easy to activate the bass. But the guitar, you stay away of that. Yeah, even, you remember the grain we said on a, this type of neck, it's very hard maple. Then, don't take ever the grain straight. You need flat grain. Because it's too stiff, the other one, the guitar. It's going to sound tin tin. You won't have this nice full range. A flat neck with the gauge we use, that's what you need. Then it's the same. Fingerboard. Okay? Why this one is maple, another one is rosewood? Big difference in tone. And people says, wow. I like the look of this. Yes. But, explain you, rosewood is a little bit more heavy than maple. Then, the neck with rosewood fingerboard will do shorter movement than this. Then the sound is going to be more mid and more mid in distortion sound. You're going to have a better result with the rosewood. But man, I love the maple neck for the nice choppy rhythm and nice chords. It sounds good. Then they're both good. What about ebony? Huh? What about ebony? Ah, okay, ebony. I was watching that. Ebony, no good on a neck in maple. If you make this neck with ebony fingerboard, tin tin sound. If you use ebony, you need mahogany with ebony. Like, for instance, uh, oh, this Godin here has got mahogany neck and ebony fingerboard. That's okay because mahogany is much lighter than, then you're going to have the three tone. But because a strat neck with ebony, run away. You're never going to be happy. 
the sound ugh, is going to not please you. Then the fingerboard is quite something. I like both. It depends. Are you more rhythm in your band? Uh, for distortion, you won't be, if you say I'm more the lead and I play a lot, then buy a Rosewood one. Palisander. Can I just sneeze? <laughs> B flat. <laughs> See, I have a good pitch. Can I ask about, um, you were talking about the neck design. Uh, yeah. What's the difference between ball tone and set, set neck? I mean, not They're both good, okay? A good ball tone. You know, the one where there's no paint under. I like it very much because it's wood to wood. A set neck, you have glue. I do both. But mm, I like a good bolt on. Fine? You understand the logic? Yeah. The other one, you have to put glue. This one, you don't have. But both are good. The problem, I'm not there in the back of the guitar. But now you know. You see, it's those things that now you're going to look with a different eye. Then, if you say I play a lot of distortion, you know, I'm the lead in my band, <sighs> buy a short scale. Go Rosewood. <coughs> you see, it's for sure. If you're more rhythm and this, buy a long scale. Like this one here. It's a long scale one. But I'll talk about it too. But so far we understand, mm -hmm. then the scale is, it should be one of the first questions you ask about the guitar. This guitar, what scale it is? And it's the reference. Some maker, I'm not going to name it, did different scale. And phew, they're missing bass, not enough high. You know, there's reference sound that you say, well, when I play my lead, I want this. And you get it with the short scale or the long scale, 62 or 65. But if you go in between, oh, it's dangerous. You're going to miss something. That's the deal. Oh, the radius here. You see, on this guitar, we have a flatter radius. Then the action is lower. And when you bend the string, it doesn't quick. The old one, they make a too big radius. You bend, whick, it stops. Because the string touch around here. This one is flatter then we correct a lot of trouble of this. OK? We're going to continue. I'm not going to take too much time. But now it's easier, because you understand the acoustic guitar, how it vibrates. and the, You see, electric guitar is the same idea. The weight of the wood come a lot, like the mahogany. We use Honduras mahogany and Brazilian <coughs> for the wood. I don't use African mahogany. It's good. It's beautiful. Too heavy. Then, good. Just to show you something here, this is one of my old model. Well, I don't know, it makes a little hum, but... It's okay. Now we did very fast. Then here, I'm just going to explain to you, this is a model that John McLaughlin plays, uh, you know, guys like that. This guitar's got many kind of wood. It's got a mahogany neck, 
with ebony fingerboard. It's got here light, light mahogany back, and the top, it's flame maple. It's a beautiful piece, long scale. But I asked this guitar a lot more because this guitar is a humbucker, but also it's got acoustic. And this is a, for a lot of guys, a dream guitar because they want to use not changing guitar on stage, using the same uh, same guitar to sound acoustic, sound electric. Then we had to do a lot of special trick. A journalist just interviewed me before the clinic here, and uh, he said, you know, Mr. Godin, I have a Godin. And he had exactly this guitar. Then he brought the guitar, I signed it. But he asked me, what is the secret? Why it sound acoustic? It's not the, the pickup, of course, it's there, but the guitar sound acoustic, unplugged. But this one here, like the bridge, it's in the guitar. It's sunk on it to get the vibration of the top here. And the microphone are in the bridge. I have a micro sensors per string. Each string got one. The string go from the back here to a brass plate to get the ring, the sound of the body. Then here, I think it's my, we have lights and I have a big problem. I just got big operation in my hand, and uh, I can really play. I'm just gonna play a couple of chords. It's gonna take another six months before I could play. Then I have a five-way switch to split the pickup, the, the humbuckers. I have one jack for my pickup. It's here, one cable. The other cable is for my bridge. And this is the control. Then the volume of my bridge, treble, mid, bass. Then I'm just going to do a chord. I'm going to cut the other one. Uh, oh my god, my finger. Then you can feel that. You see, you have the real... And now I'm gonna help with my amplifier. You see, I, it's not to play louder. It's just to have a larger sound. I'm just gonna. See, I can do more. Then you can plug your acoustic bridge in the PA for the voice, like, or a small acoustic amp like this, and your electric and your guitar amp. Then you sound double. And this one's got also a 13-pin jack. 
can go midi. And this is another game. <laughs> then the two voice guitar. This is what put me in the market a lot. Then the LGX. Here you have the volume of your pickup, the tone. And this here is the MIDI control, more or less. Okay. I don't do more. I feel so bad because I can't play. But uh, anyway, let's go to the next one. You must heard about this guitar here. This is a guitar I designed 25 years ago. It's called Multi-Ac for multi-acoustic. It's, ah, that's the one. Sorry. It's an old amp. They were making noise, but they were great. Yeah. Anyway, this here, it's an acoustic guitar, but for the music of today. An, an acoustic guitar to play live, to play on stage. All the acoustic guitar with a sound hole. Rosas, we say Rosa. Okay. Then it's great if you play alone or two guitar player. But if you play in a band, even if you have the best pickup, the sound's going to be terrible. It's going to be great the day you're going to play alone. You can play very loud alone. It's fantastic. The minute you play with the rest, it kills. Remember your table move? Remember my voice you were touching? Only the lucky guy in the front <laughs> could get that. But just here, then imagine the bass player next to you or the bass drum. Every bass drum, boom, boom, your guitar explodes. But now you say, guitar, hear my E chords. He won't hear it. Who's going to win? The bass drum. The lowest note. Then you're in trouble. You did a sound check on the afternoon. Everything was great. You arrive at night, no sound. Then it's everybody come in the box. Then here, I invent a guitar with two acoustic chamber. A big chamber here. It's all groove here. And a second chamber here. And there's a channel here, a tube to let get the air go out from the control. Then this is a small chamber. This is the big one. Then when I hit the string, this one move. The air go out. Shoom. But to go in, almost impossible. Then you can play next to a bass, a drum, percussion. You're alone. You're going to have the same sound as then. This was the pattern I made. Then I make a lot of double acoustic chamber. And also, I make nylon string guitar for steel string player. Actually, I made this guitar for Brazilian music. Brazilian, I love the style, I love the music, and they don't have a classical technique. You know, then I made a neck for them. A lot of them play with the tongue here. Classical play the real technique, but they don't. But they're good. It's just they never learn it. Then I made a neck, it's very thin, cut the fingerboard here inside with the fret both way. Then you can take the neck like this, feel like nothing. A classical guitar neck, wow. That's square, you know, it's, you can do, it's very difficult. This, I made it very easy. Also, I made a little curve in the fingerboard. All nylon string, classical guitar, they do flat fingerboard. Why? 
I look everywhere to find the reason. The, it's a very ancient instrument, the, the classical guitar. Then I think they didn't have the technology to make the radius 200 years ago. Without fret, they could do a violin with the radius, but with the fret, they couldn't. Then I made a little one. If I say, put your fingers straight, but no effort, okay? Now I say, put it really straight. You're going to have to force. Then you lose so much energy to put it straight. You see? Now here, I made it like that. And you bar, like easy. Then you have 30% more energy to play. Then it's all these things. And a lot of these guys use pick. Then I made the guitar to use a pick. Then this is a very long scale. Then also to get more tension in my string, here, the distance from the nut here to the mechanic is longer. Usually the mechanic is here. I push it there, give me more. Then here, I use a hard pick. And you're going to hear. You don't hear the pick. Then you can use your pick. Like a lot of jazz guitar now, jazz player use this thing. There's many model. There's some for real classical player, like I have it uh, right there. Oh, right there. This one in the corner is a multi act, but the 12 fret is here. Then the classical player. Their F chord here is too far. The other one is here. Then it's exactly like a classical. The neck is wider and you feel good. There's one for each player. See, it plays acoustically too because it's acoustic. Fruk, the top, I would say spruce. Murk. Smirk. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stay here to learn. <laughs> In Canada, we don't hear any Czech language, <laughs> but we have some of your good hockey player. <laughs> then this guitar, you can play full distortion with this guitar. It's uh, it's great because it's all this. You see. It goes everywhere. This one's got a very special electronic. It's got in the saddle a system plus four microphone built in. Condensator mic with no feedback. Then this is a very nice technology. Here, this is the bridge system. Here, I'm going to push it, and it's going to be the microphone. You see? We hear the air. I have a mini switch here, and it's switch microphone. I can mix the bridge system plus the microphone, like here, now I have both. Just the bridge, just the mic, and here, mix. Then you go in the studio, you're going to save so much time. And the four microphone, I don't remember because they're so... I, I just don't remember, but they are very shops mic, very high end. Then you just say to the sound man, here's a shop mic. It's right there, no sound check. 
next one. But it doesn't feed back. You see, you hear the pick. I cut. It's a big difference. Then, also, I like this one. This one is, uh, this one is the same microphone, but further than. Anyway, I can spend an hour on this guitar. I won't, I don't have the time. And, uh, but, you see the possibilities are there. And it's no sound check. You just ask for a flat channel, and here, we made the curve. Here, when everything is in the middle, the treble, the mid, the bass, it's not flat. We made the curve. But it sounds good on anything. We did a series of concerts with a famous player, Sylvain Luc. We never did a, a sound check. Ten concerts in a row, we just say, we need a jack, everything middle, goodbye. <laughs> and here, what is nice is, if you need more bass, you can go, it's just plus five. I'm pushing a little bit. Then, I don't need a big adjustment. You have it, you need more mid. E everything sounds good. You see if I... There's no bad sound. I can put everything at 10, everything at zero, and you're gonna have a great sound. Took us years to tweak the preamp. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you see then, this is the idea of multi-act. Just to finish, I'm gonna show you uh, another one. We have a new one. This is the same idea. It's a double chamber, two chamber control, but this is a baritone, but a good baritone. <laughs> All the baritone we find, man, they have no sound. This one is acoustic and electric, and we have two jack. One for the humbucker, one for the bridge. Just a, two chords. Now I'm going to use only one jack. This jack is the mixed one. But you're going to hear. You have an acoustic sound, an electric sound. You can go very crazy. Anyway, to show, it's a long scale. This one is about 72 distance from here to here, the scale. Then, then anyway, I'm going to stop because uh, they're going to they're going to call the police and <laughs> put me out i think the alarm system this is it and i'm ready to sign your guitars the one who's got some i really thank you for your patience um, everybody stayed just one guy his wife was looking for him <laughs> but beside that You've been very patient to listen to me. And 
take that and practice as you scale the detail. Thank you very much. Thank you to play go down. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Ah. Seagull.